Hey there, my pre-cal people. Making a quick video, sending at you. All right, some quick things to remember. We are going to look at secant, cosecant, and cotangent functions. We're going to go back in time just a little bit and see if we can't make your life a little bit easier. All right. So cotangent is the inverse of tan. It's one over tan. You can also think about it this way. If tangent is y over x, cotangent would be x over y. Okay. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So if sine is opposite or hypotenuse, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. And secant is 1 over cosine. So secant would be h over a instead of a over h. So let's take a look at what that means in the unit circle. If I recall and go back in my time machine, it reminds me that sine is my y coordinate, right? Sine is y. Cosine is my x. And tangent is y over x. So again, if it's my reciprocal, cosecant is 1 over y. Cosecant goes with sine. Not secant with sine. They're opposite. Co with no go, bro. So secant's 1 over x and cotan's x over y. So if I know the unit circle, I know these values as well. Okay? All right, let's talk about domain and range. Eep. 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 All right. We'll do one at our pauses. Write them all down and then come back. Oopsie. Go back and then you can get them all later. All right. So remember sine goes from negative one to one. goes on forever from left to right. Has no asymptotes, right? Sine has no asymptotes. Okay. And same with cosine. They're the exact same graph shifted over. I bounce between 1 and negative 1. Uh, I have everything in between. No asymptotes on it. Okay? Where tangent from 0 to 2 pi has two asymptotes. at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And now my domain for tangent was everywhere there's an asymptote, I don't exist. So I take my first asymptote. And I add my period times k. But now my range, if you recall, went from negative infinity to infinity forever. So all of these we've seen before. Let's talk about the new, new guys on the block. I'm just going to show them all to you, I guess. So if you recall, tangent's first asymptote is at pi of 2. Cosecant's asymptotes are going to occur when tangent is zero. And if you guys recall from back in the day, Dizzle. Oopsie, that was loud. Oops, Jimmy Cricket, stop it. Wow, 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 wow. That went terribly. I'm not even pausing. You guys can deal with this. Oh, it's a good video. Best for the is the best. Oh no, why <laughs> mama mia? Alright. So for these, tangent had a zero at zero zero. So if it's one over zero, it's cosec or cotangent, that's gonna be my asymptote. Alright? So I guess maybe copy these down, we'll talk about them. So cosecant does have asymptotes, and secant has asymptotes, and cotangent has asymptotes. And cotangent's asymptotes are the same as cosecant's because it's 1 over sine, or cosine over sine. So whenever cosine or our sine is 0, cotangent will not exist. And wherever sine is 0, cosecant won't exist. Honestly, this is going to be better when we actually look at some graphs. Is this even an example yet? Okay. 
Alright. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. Alright. So Alright, I have no idea why I just missed, but just write that down. You'll know it. Alright, let's do this. How do we graph these beasts? Alright, this looks really scary. Really, 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 really scary. Here's what I'm going to tell you to do. When you go to graph cosecant, what we're going to do is graph the reciprocal. So we graph sine. And you guys are good at that. This isn't new. And what you do is you graph sine dotted. And then you look at it, and anywhere that you cross or have a zero, you put an asymptote in there. You see that any time sine crosses zero, you put an asymptote in there. All right? So whenever sine equals zero, you put an asymptote. And then when you draw your parabolas, they meet wherever my max and mins are. Okay? So you just graph sine. That's all I did is I graph sine. And then what I did, it's wherever it crossed through the x-axis. I put a dotted line there for an asymptote. And then I went to my maxes and mins and put my parabola. The period of this is still 2 pi. But now my range is everything that sine isn't. Sine goes from negative 1 to 1. This one goes from 1 to infinity and negative 1 to infinity. All right? And x can't equal every pi k. So wherever my zeros are, X can't be because I can't divide by zero. All right. And my asymptotes are every pi k. It's half my period of it. Okay. Let's let's look at another one. The same is true. when I look at secant. But now secant, I'm going to graph cosine. And wherever I cross the x-axis is an asymptote. And wherever my highs and lows are, give me where to start my parabolas. Again, my range exists where cosine does not exist. And my domain is restricted by those asymptotes. Trust me, this will be better. The more we graph of these, the better it is. Oh, that was an example one. All right. So I'm going to pause. All right. For, so both these I'm going to graph from scratch, and that, that should help us out. All right, so I'm looking at this function, right? Now, what I'm actually going to graph or think about my reciprocal is the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. So I'm going to graph 2 sine of x over 2. Okay? So according to this, I would have an amplitude of 2 and a period of 2 pi over 2 or over 1 half, which is 4 pi. And that's true. My period is going to be the same, found the same way. So I'm going to graph that my good old-fashioned way. I'm going to start at, use my intercept, right? Intercept, intercept, because my period is 2 pi. For sine, I'm going to go up to 2, down to 2, right? And then I'm going to do it again. And on the other side, I'm going to go in reverse. Just keep on alternating. So you can put that as a dotted line. It's hard for me to draw dotted lines on this. I guess I probably have a tool that will let me do that. But I'm not good at Oh, I could have just done that tool. All right. So now to actually graph it, what I'm going to do is wherever I pass through that x-axis, I'm going to put a dotted line in. Because that's going to be an asymptote.
Ta da! Alright, so I put in my asymptotes. Oops. Why did I put that one right there? Jiminy crickets. My bad. Alright, and then I'm going to go through, and this will, my answer will be in black. My final answer will be in black. At each of these high low points, is where I'm going to make my U's. So I'm going to make a U, a U, and a U, U, U. So the black graph is the correct graph. All right. There we go. Mamma mia, I graphed two cosec of x. Just cross that off. We'll call it good. I graphed it so my period was two. I was wondering why there's so many. Ay, caramba. I'm like, why did they give this one to you? Chimney crickets. That's what happens when I rush a video. All right. Let's do B. Let's do being a call, call it a day. It's been too long of a day. All right, so I'm going to graph negative 2 cosine of 3x. All right, so my period's going to be 2 pi over 3. My, my amplitude is 2 on this one, and it's going to be flipped over the x-axis. So when I graph this one, my period's too high. Cosine usually starts high. This one's going to start low, right? I'm going to start low. And it's going to repeat it. 2 pi over 3. Right? My zeros are mediums. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, I can't do this. Okay, that's not too bad. All right, and then what I'm going to do is anywhere, anywhere I see where I cross zero is going to be an asymptote. So asymptote, asymptote. Asymptote, asymptote, asymptote. All right. And then I'm going to go through and put all my U's in. Make them green. This color, whatever it is. So I'm going to put a U. Oh, I don't want a dad line anymore. This is my final answer here, but oh. <laughs> put a U. 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 So remember, these U's are my final answer. Everything else is construction lines, right? All right. Well, I wish I could do more, guys. That's where I have to end today because I'm running out of time. Um, enjoy. Enjoy.